Japan will get help from Kazakhstan in cleaning up areas tainted by radiation after last year's accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Japan's economy, trade and industry minister Yukio Edano met Asset Esekashev, Kazakhstan's counterpart on Tuesday. Kazakhstan's nucle National Nuclear Center has over 20 years of experience in decontaminating nuclear testing sites of the former Soviet Union. Edano asked for the nation's cooperation in cleaning up and rebuilding the Fukushima plant. The second chef said his country will offer its experience and techniques to help Japan. Edano told reporters he believes that sharing information on decontamination will greatly assist the reconstruction of Fukushima. The Japanese government's plan to restart two of the four reactors at the OE power plant in Fukui Prefecture is coming under criticism from neighboring Kyoto Prefecture. A Kyoto prefectural official says the central government has a lot more explaining to do about the plant safety. Tetsuya Yamamoto is a senior representative from the government's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency. On Tuesday, he met Kyoto official Kiyoshi Yamada, who heads the prefecture's crisis management team. Yamamoto explained that the entire government is dedicated to putting new safety standards in place following the Fukushima accident. But the Kyoto official replied that it's unclear to what extent the Nuclear Safety Commission was involved in devising the latest standards. Your explanations are inconsistent with our demands. Misawa Tsuyoshi, a member of Kyoto's prefecture's expert committee, also pointed out that a secondary evaluation of the stress test done on the plants should be conducted. Yamamoto agreed but declined to comment on the timing. In mid-April, the government decided that the OE plant's two reactors on the Japan Sea coast need to be restarted to ensure that the Kansai region does not suffer power shortages this summer. The reactors are now offline for regular checkups. An environmental activist has managed to breach security and land a paraglider inside a nuclear power plant in eastern France. The environmental group Greenpeace says it staged the event to spur debate about nuclear power ahead of the presidential election. The Greenpeace activist used a motorized glider to trespass into the Bouget nuclear site early on Wednesday. The man circled the plant and dropped a smoke bomb onto the roof of the reactor before landing. Police arrested him as soon as he touched ground. Greenpeace says the spectacle was meant to stimulate the presidential candidates to discuss nuclear safety in their televised debate later on Wednesday. We wanted to show the threat that France's nuclear plants face. After Greenpeace breached security and entered another nuclear plant in December, the French government said it had tightened security at the country's nuclear facilities. Japan's foreign minister has asked Israel's leaders to show restraint in dealing with Iran. He urged them not to launch a military strike. Israeli officials have repeatedly refused to rule out an attack on Iranian nuclear facilities. Koichiro Gemba made the appeal in Jerusalem at a meeting with his Israeli counterpart Avigdor Lieberman. He said the unprecedented international pressure against Iran is working. He also said any military action would give Iran another pretext to push forward with its nuclear development. Gemba warned that military action by Israel would trigger global turmoil. Lieberman said only Israelis can protect Israel and all options are on the table. Gemba met later with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The Israeli leader showed no signs of softening his stance. He warned that the oil market will fall into chaos if Iran requires, or rather acquires, nuclear weapons. Gemba said Japan wants to work with other countries to solve the issue diplomatically. Japan and the U.S. have also agreed to step up collaboration in nuclear energy and natural resources. Their governments released statements after a summit meeting in Washington on Monday. They say the two nations will set up a vice ministerial level panel. That's to discuss private sector use of nuclear power based on lessons learned from last year's accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. 
Possible areas for tie-up include decommissioning of reactors, decontamination and boosting measures to combat terrorism that targets nuclear power plants. The two countries also agreed to join forces on rare earth minerals. China is becoming reluctant to export these key resources which are used in high-tech products. Japan and the U.S. will work together on recycling rare earths and in developing alternatives. People living on Japan's northeast coast have been wary of the sea ever since it rose up and ravaged towns and villages after last year's earthquake. Now, a new poll suggests the majority of municipal representatives are planning to rebuild residential areas away from the Pacific Ocean's reach. Land and Infrastructure Ministry surveyed more than 200 communities in Iwate, Miyagi and Fukushima prefectures. Seventy percent of communities devastated by the tsunami say they aim to move inland or to higher ground. 12% say they hope to build up ground levels and heighten levees in areas that were flooded and then move there. 18% say they hope to construct or strengthen levees before rebuilding on land where homes used to stand. The survey suggests people living in areas that could be hit by waves higher than two meters hope to move or raise the ground level in residential districts. Those in locations that could be hit by smaller waves hope to stay where they are.
Now get this, a little bird has whispered in a police officer's ear, and it's not a joke. A stray parakeet has been reunited with his owner after telling police the address of his home near Tokyo. The two-year-old male parakeet is named Pico. He flew into a hotel garden in Sagamihara City on Sunday, then perched on the shoulder of a guest. Hotel staff took the bird to a police station. Two days later, the bird began saying a street name and a number. An officer contacted a woman at the address and found the bird's owner. Then police took the parakeet home. I was so happy that I jumped for joy when I heard Pico was found. I'll never let him go. Takahashi taught the bird to say her address and phone number after another parakeet flew away five years ago.